This video is all about the cell wall of prokaryotes. Um, specifically, we are going to be talking about bacteria um, in these videos, because remember, the archaea are not really a threat to us. Um, so in this course, we do talk more about uh, bacteria. So if you recall from the types of microbes video, um, Bacteria have a cell wall composed primarily of peptidoglycan. So this video is going to talk about the function of this cell wall, the uh, more detailed uh, molecular makeup of peptidoglycan, and then we're going to compare the gram-positive cell walls to that of the gram-negative cell walls. So the cell wall um, gives the bacterial cell its shape. And it also offers structural support needed uh, to prevent the bacteria from lysing, which is another word for bursting, um, or even collapsing due to changes in the osmotic pressure in the environment. So most bacteria live in aqueous habitats, so aquatic watery habitats. Um, and oftentimes these aqueous habitats have low concentrations of dissolved substances. And so that means they're often in a hypotonic solution. So think back to our osmosis video. What happens when a bacterial cell is placed in a hypotonic solution, right? Water is going to be entering the cell. So this means that on a regular basis, bacterial cells are constantly absorbing um, extra water via osmosis. And so the cell wall, um, especially, especially the um, rigidity and strength of the peptidoglycan, um, this is what keeps the bacterial cells from lysing or rupturing, okay? Um, and we actually really capitalize on the importance of the cell wall when we are designing antimicrobial drugs, right? Because when we're sick, we want to get rid of the bacteria. And so a lot of antimicrobial drugs target the peptidoglycan and um, to, to disrupt the integrity of the cell wall. There are also drugs that are designed to prevent the cell wall from even being made um, as new bacteria are created via binary fission. So um, the cell wall is really, really important for the integrity of a bacterial cell. So the picture at the bottom of this slide is looking, is giving you an image of the structural makeup of peptidoglycan. And as you can see, um, peptidoglycan is made up of repeating sugar units, NAG and NAM. So that's gonna be, um, NAG is represented by the blue circles, NAM by the orange circles, and I do not, um, expect you to memorize what NAG and NAM stand for. But notice that it always alternates, right? NAG, NAM, NAG, NAM. And then these rows of repeating sugars um, are connected uh, by these little um, peptides, okay? But what I do want you to notice is the difference between the gram-positive makeup and the gram-negative makeup. Notice that those pentapeptides, the little yellow circles in the left-hand image, um, are missing from the gram-negative cell wall. And that is going to be reflected in the specific details of the gram-positive versus gram-negative cell wall. So the bulk of that cell wall is similar, but as you're going to see here in a minute, gram-positive cells have a lot of peptidoglycan, this very thick layer. And it's because those pentapeptides are keeping those layers of or those rows of NAG and NAM uh, connected to one another. So bacteria are separated uh, based on the type of cell wall they have. We have gram positive cells and we have gram negative cells. And the gram refers to the gram stain, a scientist that figured out a way to differentiate bacteria based on their cell wall. There will be a separate video on the gram stain. Um, so for right now, uh, don't worry about the details of the gram stain. Let's take a look at the differences in the cell wall composition for gram positive cells and gram negative cells. So here is a gram positive cell. 
And as you can see, most of this cell wall is a thick homogeneous sheath of peptidoglycan, okay? And it's really pretty thick. Uh, many, many layers of peptidoglycan are connected here together. And you'll notice that the gram-positive cell wall also contains these sugar molecules um, called tachoic acid, and which is down here on the left. And then there is also lipo tachoic acid, which means lipo means lipid or fat. And so lipo tachoic acids are tachoic acids that are um, similar in structure to the regular tachoic acid, but they're attached to lipids in the plasma membrane. So check this out right over here. See how uh, this particular tachoic acid is connected to the membrane, right? It's helping um, keep the cell wall and the pl uh, plasma membrane together. As we have another one um, over here, you can see it's in, embedded in the plasma membrane as well. Whereas ones that are not called lipotachoic acid, which is what I'm going to circle right now, these guys, so this one, notice it is not connected to the plasma membrane, nor is this one right here. Okay. So again, mainly for gram positive cell walls, um, thick layer peptidoglycan and tachoic acid. All right, next up are the gram negative cell walls. Um, and these are just two pictures, uh, two different pictures showing the same thing, the gram negative cell wall. Um, so what I want you to notice though, let me see if I can use a highlighter here. This that I'm about to highlight, and then I will erase the highlight once you see it. This thin red layer here, that kind of looks like the middle of a sandwich, that is the peptidoglycan layer of a gram negative cell wall, right? That's really, really thin compared to what we just saw in the gram positive cell wall, okay? So again, we have our plasma membrane on the bottom of each picture, okay, right? Because all bacterial cells have a plasma membrane, that phospholipid bilayer that we talked about. And then again, the cell wall is outside of the plasma membrane. But notice, that there's a second phospholipid bilayer that's now on top of that thin layer of peptidoglycan. And this is there because with only a thin layer of peptidoglycan, like one or two layers, um, that cell would be at great risk of bursting or you know, if it bumped into another cell, it could be damaged and die. So thin peptidoglycan is, is not good on its own, it's bad. And so these cells have evolved to have an outer membrane, a second phospholipid bilayer to offer that extra layer of protection, okay? So because the gram negatives have a thin layer of peptidoglycan, they also have an outer membrane. I typically uh, label this OM, just because shorthand notation will save you <laughs> in some classes uh, where there's just so many things to write in a short period of time. So um, there's this outer membrane. Okay, now this outer membrane contains molecules called LPS, lipopolysaccharides, so lipopolysaccharides, so you will always hear me call this LPS, okay, and so it's right here in the, in the image, and lipopolysaccharide um, has two separate components, so the lipo again means lipid, so that's lipid A, and then the polysaccharide is a, a sugar, Okay, um, and it has an O antigen on it. Okay, now I'm not too worried that you're about the O antigen versus lipid A. What I do want you to know is that LPS is an endotoxin. That's what I really want you to take away from this particular bit of the conversation. Endotoxins are molecules that the bacteria use as a weapon. And so they are not good for us. We do not like them. And so if you actually get sick and you get infected by a gram negative bacteria, sometimes when the doctor gives you the prescription, they'll tell you, you might feel worse before you feel better. And that's because when you take those antibiotics, they're going to kill, normally rupture these bacterial cells, therefore releasing all these LPS molecules, these endotoxin, uh, into your body, throughout your body. And so sometimes you'll get fever, chills, you know, headache, things like that, 
uh, when you first start some antibiotics. And that's because it's releasing that endotoxin into your body. All right, so we have a thin layer of peptidoglycan. We have an outer membrane that contains an endotoxin, um, LPS, but they also have these porins, okay? And there's a bigger picture on the next slide. I know there's a lot happening here, but these porins are little pores that regulate what can go in and out of the cell. And, um, so they act kind of like what we talked about with the plasma membrane. It's an extra layer of regulation and protection. Now, these porins have a very specific shape. And only molecules that have a similar shape can get into the cell. So it's much like a lock and key situation, right? Only my key will open my specific lock. Okay, so it's very, the 3D shape is critical. And the reason this is a pain in the rear end for us is that we have to design antibiotics that have a similar shape to these porins. That way, the bacteria will actually take up those drugs and die. So it's, it's kind of like a, a two jobs here when we're creating these antimicrobial drugs. One, they have to actually be effective. They have to target something in the bacteria that will kill them, but they also have to have a very specific shape so that we can trick the bacterial cell into taking it in. So gram-negative organisms are a bit trickier to kill because they have these porins in their outer membrane. So again, just like the endotoxin, the porins are great for the bacteria. It's an extra layer of protection for them, but it makes our human lives a bit more difficult, okay? So let's go ahead and wrap up this video with a quick comparison between the gram positive and gram negative cell wall. So how I remember it is with the gram positive, right? Positive normally is a good thing. So um, it's really good or positive that our uh, gram positive cells have a thick layer of peptidoglycan. So I'm gonna abbreviate peptidoglycan as PG. And then they also have tachoic acid, right? And a T is identical to the positive sign. So that's why I remember that tachoic acid is present in the gram positive cell wall, okay? So it's positive that there's lots of peptidoglycan and it's positive that there's a tachoic acid. Now, with our gram negative that we just talked about. Okay, so again, compare this big old layer of peptidoglycan to this tiny little one right here, this little red thing, right? Significant difference, okay? And remember, having a thin layer of peptidoglycan is a bad thing, right? So it's negative, okay? And because this thin layer of peptidoglycan can't offer all the protection the bacteria needs. It also has an outer membrane. It has a second phospholipid bilayer. And that second phospholipid bilayer, that outer membrane, contains two things that make our lives difficult. It has those porins, again, that have a unique 3D shape. So anything that gets into the cell must have a similar shape. And that outer membrane also contains the molecule LPS, which is a natural endotoxin, okay? So make sure that you can differentiate between gram positive and gram negative cell walls. I apologize, there's a typo in this one. That should be negative, my apologies, y'all. Um, definitely know the difference between the two. Okay, I could ask you to describe the difference, label the difference, and I wouldn't want, you don't have to like label all of these, you know, things, okay, just the things that we've talked about, okay? Um, but you definitely, you could have like a multi-select question, you know, which of the following are present in a gram-positive cell wall? So you definitely, definitely, definitely need to know what's what makes up the gram-positive cell wall, what makes up the gram-negative cell wall, um, and why that's important. All right, let me know if you have any questions.